Hello there, Smite Draft League, and welcome to week number three of the Unstoppable Division this time. we got a good matchup here. The Kingslayers taking on the Sunbreakers. I'm Kingfisher, and joining me for this cast, we got Phoenix. Phoenix, how you doing? I'm doing very well, Mr. Fisher, and it's a blessing to be able to do a, an Unstoppable Division because we don't see too many of these as of the last at least two weeks, but here we are. I think we got a big match here between two of the somewhat better teams i know sunbreakers has a couple of points on the board right now as far as the standings go so i'm excited to see what kingslayers can bring to the board as well absolutely it should be a really good set ahead of us i know a lot of the casters were pretty high on that kingslayers draft coming out of the of course draft before week one and then when you look at that sunbreakers team a lot of names that we know here at the sdl cactus arms red pepper cap and chris players that we're a little bit more familiar with but certainly ready to see the kingslayers pull one off here I think you said you were surprised to see a couple of these people in the Unstoppable Division. People like Cactus Arms and people like Kevin Chris, you know, these are names that we expected to see possibly in Divine, but they're here in Unstoppable and ready to play some big games against some other big names like Bird or Pluto. We know this name as well. Someone that was in Divine, I think, at one previous season and was a really strong player in that role. So we're seeing some very generic bands, though. So we, we can go from Godlike until Divine and then you have Unstoppable right here. Bands are not changing that much. Marticaris, Kali, Bakasira, Baba Yaga, all already off the table. They are, and normally we kind of think of like the Divine Divisions and last year's Challenger Division as where we see really a lot of target bands because players are very, very comfortable on more niche gods and maybe don't play as many of the meta gods. Certainly not the case here. Like you said, we expected some of these players to be higher. We had a huge influx of players that maybe pushed some people down. Mm -hmm. And the Jormungandr ban, I know Jeffrey would like to see that one. He in particular is really high on this Jormungandr in the solo lane. World Serpent is a great ultimate to create space for your team. And I'm surprised to see it get banned, but also I'm not surprised to see the Ravana. So we basically have five very meta bans. And your Rangander, which is just really strong in the soul lane. And then a meta pick coming out with the Thor. That's another ban that I've seen in that Jormungandr spot could have been this exact pick, the Thor. And so I like to see the Thor pick coming out from Kingslayers. It shows a it shows a piece of knowledge from this level of, of play, even though they're our lowest division. Sometimes oh, these are some great picks. Like this is some really strong picks already coming out. Yeah, they are. I know a lot of the casters love watching the lower division games because you get exciting comps, you get yeah. gameplay you're not expecting. It's just a fun experience all the way around. I think Sunbreakers probably do the right thing, banning that Ravana over the Thor. As good as Thor really is, Robin's just no scary. If you want them to get one assassin, success. it's definitely the God of Thunder and already a really strong, really aggressive frontline locked in there. Sun Wukong Ganesh going to bring a lot of, lot of power to this team comp. A lot of power that it is. Dark pillars and going up into that sky is going to be just a threat alone. But responding with the Hajiman is a great thing to do. If dark pillars come out, just go ahead and do that wonderful ride on that back of that horse and get out of the entire situation is what Hajiman will do. Wisdom Have that pillar of Athena shit. is even a better answer to this front line that is already so aggressive from some burgers that you just said, Fisher. I'm excited to see exactly what they can pick in mid here because that's the still two options that are open for both teams. I think Sunbreakers should take a mid right here. Oh, oh. Right uh, hey, who knows? Can't can't count out the Ratatasker mid that early. <laughs> Certainly could happen. Ratatasker, a pick we've been seeing a lot more of lately. And the Athena as well really picked up a lot of traction in support. I, I don't think the Hachimon pick really surprises anyone here. Top no. of the ADC meta for a reason still performs very well. And I'm excited to see this rat. Not really the assassin you would think is prioritized in the top three. No, you would think maybe towards this comp with how aggressive it is, possibly even like a Thanatos, an Al Kuang, someone with an execute, someone with a lot more ability to levy off of the Sun Wukong. But 
through the cosmos is a great ability and you can go into that sky and put yourself into a great position to take a better fight but speaking of mids <laughs> there go three of them let's see if a fourth one will go on these bands because both teams need a mid let's just remove them all from the table why not I like the bands from Sunbreakers. You got to think those are kind of targeted. Giannis and Ron, not the normal mid laners you see, but of course, Berta Pluto is the captain over there for the Kingslayers. Certainly knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be another mid, but it's going to be on her instead. I definitely don't hate the on her ban. It's really been picking up in popularity. It saw some good buffs, but there's a lot of other good ADCs still available. Speaking of guys that have been like being picked up. Donza Burrow is a weird god that I've been seeing a lot of in like immortal level play for some reason, but also Charybdis has been pretty big as well. I'm these are two guys that I did not expect to see in Death the current meta, but Ashi Blanque is also something I didn't expect to see, but I, I'm happy to see him. It's a good answer to almost any ADC that's picked, and especially a Hachiman with that dash, you can create a lot of. That space that is created through the dash that Hajiman has can also be made back up with the Jibalanke dash. So it's a good answer. I'm surprised seeing this Jibalanke on the side of the Sunbreakers because it feels like one of the classic combos we've been talking about at the start of the season. Whenever it's locked in, the X Bowl and the Thor ults are beyond deadly. You have no mm. idea you're being dunked on. It's really hard to get the pre beads, it's very easy to hit the combo. But on the other side, you can do the same thing for a Ratatoska roll. Just going to come flying out of nowhere, hits a stun easily, so that should be a really good pairing once this either ADC leaves the duo lane or oh, Rat gets right, over to the rest. left side of the map. And Discordia, another mid laner that it feels like we don't talk about a ton, but as always, just kind of always there in the meta. Yeah, the lead LC named Evan plays a lot of Discordia in other leagues as well as he's played it in our league last season. Listen One of those pocket picks words. that a lot of these mids have just to pull out whenever they need it. And in this team comp, they have so much CC now, especially with the Hoombots lock-in. Kingslayers, are, the name of the game is going to be CC. That is the most wild situation with Fear No Evil, with Taunt, with the big old stun from Hajim and if he's able to land that dash in the proper way with Strife and with everything else that Discordia brings to the table as far as Golden Apple, including the wall from Thor and Ultimate. It's a CC party on Kingslayer's side. I would expect at least a Magi's Blessing or five beads coming out from Sunbreakers. And I think that would be the correct answer, or at least a lot of beads coming out from them. Gonna need a lot. Luckily for them, they do have a pretty good amount of CC immunity. Of course, three or mm. four ultimates already. They have a silence on Ganesh, which is gonna be nice. And that Hunbot's lock in means that that's gonna be a Thor solo. Oh. And normally it's a little bit up and down of like whether people like Thor better in the jungle or the solo lane. I mean, whatever your position is on that, I will say having the Thor into that Sun Wukong is a pretty good matchup. You're going to be able to stun them out of the transformations extremely Face easily. That Somersault Cloud is going to be scorned. forced early and often there from Cactus Arms. Speaking of pocket picks, not exactly a pocket pick, something that has been seen a lot this season is Morgan Le Fay. So I'm not, I'm not surprised to see this. Good answer to the Discordia and a good answer to create space for yourself. Another, as you just said, CC Immune Ultimate. Uh, and that's exactly what you need if you're trying to get away from a Hoombots who's probably going to be jumping on you all game if you're a Morgan Le Fay and out of position especially. Not as much escape. This is not a Giannis. This is not a Scylla. Not an Agni because these are two banned gods and a god that probably is not picked as much currently in the meta. But Morgan Le Fay is a good answer to most of Kingslayer's team. I'm excited to see exactly what Sunbreakers can do to answer what Kingslayers have picked because I think that this comp on the left hand side of your screen with the Thor solo as you said it's actually a pretty good answer to some Wukong and I'm excited to see if it can rotate into the mid lane and possibly create some chaos there. Luckily for that fold does kind of have that semi global ultimate and kind of the teleport on the hammer so rotating should certainly be the name of the game there for Conquistador. And Morgan Le Fay also you mentioned not having the dash but mm -hmm. has one of the best self peel kits in the game, not even among mid laners. So going to be good against the Thor, the Hunbats, the Athena, all of whom are going to be trying to shut down the Sunbreakers. But let's not delay any further. Get right into game number one. Have 
And just like that, we are back. Game number one between the Kingslayers and the Sunbreakers here for the Unstoppable Division. We're both these teams hungry to get a win here and on cast too. So ho hopefully everyone enjoying this set. <laughs> I'm excited to get a win, Kingfisher. You know how we are. We got to get those wins on, on cast and in game. And I think that this win is already kind of looking like it's going to be not towards a specific team because both teams are very strong as comps as we both were kind of boosting them up in the in the picks and bands but i want to bring your attention to the mid lane is going to be very much so a level five game both of these teams have very strong level five fights and let's see exactly who can make that rotation and make those kills happen in the mid lane faster as i said that thor is the one you want to be looking at if you can make that rotation in the mid lane that's an answer that will not be easy to answer if you're on the side of sunbreakers or a very difficult character to deal with really at all stages and especially in a role like solo lane you're really not expecting those early rotations so conquistador can certainly make something happen there just more brawling in the mid lane but it's going to be the sunbreakers that tick over to level three first you mentioned the thor having that big rotation when they hit level five but just as big arguably is going to be the hunbats at fear no evil one of the most devastating ultimate series I would hope to see the Swoombots maybe in the left lane a little bit. We just got over here. Thank you very much, Nublet, for the same time rotation over here. But this is a place that at level 5 can be a great place that the Fear No Evil can land on two gr big gods. And if especially if we don't have any beads on Cap and Chris, it's just easy kills. And, and that's what you're looking for. So you're going to pull beads. And that's exactly what Athena can do is set up kills for Strife in the dual lane. So I expect to see some rotations from Hoombots into the left lane and maybe just the opposite from Ratataskers. We see him on the right side of the map right now. Now Strife is pathing around the back. They're going to be looking for the X-Ball here. Captain Chris not going to get away yet. Instead, the target's going to be Ganesh. Jack Tough dropping low. Finds a knockup, but a lot of damage shall use. Strife dropping low now. Jointed Rumble picks up the first kill. And Crap and Chris with one back on the other side of the map. Red Peppers arrived and Conquistador goes down. Two kills to one for Sunbreakers, although they dropped the first blood. Might not be done though, Captain Chris. Still low, but escapes under the tower. The ADC from the Sunbreakers is going to survive to fight another day. Who's the ADC from uh, the Kingslayers right now? Because Fuzzy Wazzy almost just half healthed the entirety of Captain Chris's health with the minions, the help of five other minions on the back of his, uh, his neck right there. But isn't that kind of cool what just happened right there? You had the rotation from the left-hand side go Hoombots to the dual lane. Then you had Ratatasker on the right-hand side. And I love how aggressive Red Pepper is being. Already going for a blue buff here. Not a situation you want to be in if you're a, a Thor. You're trying to have those blue buffs, especially when you're this low on mana already. Always nice to kind of not worry as much about mana, but Red Pepper's not going for the buff. They're coming right back for another kill, and Conquistador's out of mana. Red Pepper dashes in, gets a stun, gets a knockup from Sun Wukong. Conquistador dropping low and drops right back to the grave. Just like that, the first ones take over to level 5 for the Sunbreakers. As it's two kills on the Thor, and maybe another coming up here on the Athena. Captain Chris still trying to chase it down, but... Athena still about half health, should survive fine under the tower. Sunbreakers add another one to their belts. We did say that, that Thor is a good answer to Sun Wukong, and that is true. But I don't think Thor is a good answer to a two... I don't think anyone's really a good answer to a two-minute gank, as well as a three-minute gank. A back-to-back, -back within a minute gank. And if anyone has an answer, it could have been a Thor. But also, it's just very difficult to outpace a Ratatasker and a Sun Wukong in the laning phase when your axe is down. And in that situation, Hammer was down for Thor both times when the ganks occurred. And Conquistador is finding himself into a brawl that he probably does not want to be in in this current state of the game. These rotations would be hard to make now into the mid lane. They're going to be because if he does get out of that lane, going to uh, kind of be forced to lose a little XP and not a trade you want to make. Didn't have any wards up on the right side of the map. It does have some over the now, so hopefully it should be ready for the next Red Pepper gank. Not to worry, the rat is on the left side of the map. And the aggressive rat tasker is how you always want to see it played, but not many people can. I'd love to see Red Pepper kind of continue this pace throughout the game because it's going to be a really difficult one to hold. It is going to be a difficult one to hold, and I think the Sunbreakers have put themselves in a great position in the early game here. Not only does the score show you 3-1, to one, but already invading some buffs and putting yourself in the proper position in the map. Strife is over on the right-hand side of the map right now, looking possibly to do something on this side. Morgan Le Fay at the right-hand camps right here, but Strife just a little bit too late to make that kill. Roberto Pluto, no 
mana. I like this Discordia pick, but I don't know if it's going to be that great of an answer. There's a Fear No Evil, though. Fear No Evil forces out the beads. Nothing else, though. Striker able to easily get back under the tower. Still, though, if you're Strife, you gotta got to like that trade now that Morgan Le Fay going to be forced to use that consuming power. The rest of her kit, if you jump on her in the next two and a half minutes, it's going to be difficult. Conquistador cancels the back. Might be a mistake. Red Pepper's over here, and they don't know it yet. Now going to retreat under the Tier 1 tower. Lawn Mana, though, probably don't win that trade, but now the Humbat's stuck in a 1v2. Good stun there from Cactus Arm. Strife dropping low. Rat goes into the Through the Cosmos. Humbat's on half HP, knocked up. Stun, not gonna land yet. Gets into the Tier 1 Tower, though. Strife barely able to make it out alive. Good awareness by the Humbat's leaping over the wall. Yeah, we need to go ahead and get over to this blue buff and possibly position towards a better defense on it. Look at where Red Pepper is now. He's at the speed buff. Feeling confident enough to go ahead and challenge the red buff as well. A lot of brawling going on, not only in the jungle, but also in every one of these lanes. I'm, I am I was talking about this Discordia before we got around to it, but this matchup, Morgan Le Fay and Discordia, even though Discordia has a ton of self-safety, as we said, Morgan Le Fay has her own self-pill. And the answer that you have to have if you're a Discordia is to be able to pump out that damage for your team to be able to get that kill. And your team is currently not in the best position to be able to get those kills. We need Strife to go ahead and start playing a little bit more like Red Pepper and making these big rotations to these speeds and reds and put himself into a position to get these kills because if Strife and Discordia can get together and get some kills, that's ridiculous amount of CC and damage. Golden Apple on top of Fear No Evil? Imagine, man, that's not what you want to be in as a Kingfisher Shernunos ADC. <laughs> It, it sure isn't. That's a lot of damage and some really hard damage to escape. Now we're going to see Fazzy Wazzy rotate over. First time we've seen the Athena out of the mid lane. That's another character you want to see rotating. Mm -hmm. Just provides so much for the team. Now sticking around on right, blue buff isn't going to be up for another 30 seconds, so maybe here a tad early. But Red Pepper, wasting no time, already on the right side of the map, facing down the Thor Conquistador, finds a stun. Red Pepper trying to chase out, but Glad Shield nearly online doesn't do a ton of damage. Uses the rest of the mana to escape. The Athena going to keep the Thor safe, but has to back to base. Does have Tower Teleport, though. Tower Teleport is very nice to have on your side. As a Thor, it's even nicer because you're an assassin, typically never buying that kind of thing. Speaking of not having teleport, Captain Chris almost going to fall down to the watery grave here, which is a Kuzumbo ultimate, but also the thing I would call where he would land. A 1v1 in the jungle right here, though. Strife finds a Fear No Evil onto Red Pepper. Red Tasker trying to get into the World Tree and does so successfully. Darkest Knight comes out from X-Ball and Rat. Are they going to dunk down? Strife still at about half HP, but no, Red Pepper's going to walk away. Smartly so, you kind of don't want to dive into the middle of four people. Discordia does rotate out of the lane. And for, I believe, the second time this game, they keep their blue buff. Gotta love that if you're counting Keith Dador. Yeah, if you're King Dador and in the entirety of Kingslayers, you needed that blue buff for a very long time. And it's good rotation. That's a really wild call to see. We don't even see that kind of call in Divine and in Immortal level game sometimes. Those blue buffs can go away and away and away for a straight 20 minutes, it feels like. And so to see a rotation of four people to that blue buff means that they actually made a wild and strong call for everyone to rotate there. But Red Pepper takes advantage of that and says, all right, I'll go to the other side of the map and go ahead and take your back camps from here. Now has his eyes on to possibly this uh, Hodgman. Joint to the Rumble still sticking around. Doesn't see the rat yet. No ward's going to be close. Uses the mounted archery to escape, though. Doesn't have to burn the beads. Red Tasker walks away, and yeah, defending that blue buff is not just a moral victory. Theoretically, it slows Red Pepper down, but as we see on the left side of the map, that's just not happening. The Red Tasker just wants all the farm, but now gonna have to retreat back to their own jungle, because they have remembered there is farm on their side of the map, too. That is one of the funniest things as a jungler, is to be able to just be like, I'm just gonna ignore all five of my buffs that are up on my side of the map, and go take this one blue buff, and die doing it sometimes. It, it's... It's that mindset of like taking away farm is a, a net win in both ways. You take away farm from the enemy team and you get your own farm. It's just a win-win situation. But sometimes it doesn't work in your way. And I understand that there was a four-man rotation. Ooh, speaking of a four-man rotation, Red Pepper almost dies here. Will be able to walk away with his own life. 
But I also continue my own point there, which is if you make those rotations and see the po the possibility is go is out of the way. So Sunbreaker saw it and said, "There's no more gank here." They went ahead and walked away. Best decision of their life. When consuming power used on to Bird of Pluto, nearly dies at Discordia. Gonna live though. Kingslayer is all across the map, just in in different waves of trouble. Bird of Pluto nearly dies. Conquistador drops low, but they almost shut Red Pepper down. And we, I mean, we gotta know, even though the Red Tasker's been making the proactive plays, been getting the buff invades, down half a level onto the Hunbots, it may be hurting, but now through the Cosmos used, Conquistador is gonna be the target. Knock up lands, a stun gonna land as well, Thor dropping low, and for the third time, the Thor gonna fall to the combined power of Red Pepper and Cactus Arms, a combo we haven't seen too much yet. Condition we have not seen. Bird of Pluto is doing the Lord's work right now and making these rotations to try to make this blue buff their own buff again, and they will. Conquistador is getting a little bit of a friendly help here from his team in this hard situation that he is in. They are doing really well at trying to keep him in this game by securing these last two blue buffs especially. We would love to see some bigger ganks possibly onto Sun Wukong, but it is very difficult to gank a Sun Wukong in <laughs> instead of a Thor. Thor has to go over the air. Speaking of hard ganks, Jordan Rumble has been forced to use his ultimate to escape now two times we've seen. And I don't think this is going to be the last time because it's a hard situation to be a Hajiman into a lot of damage. Then that's exactly what... Sunbreakers is, is a lot of damage and a lot of space can be created between the ultimate, but Red Pepper can remake that space up real quick. The Red Tasker is on the left side of the map, currently duking it out with the Athena. And luckily for the Hachimon, that ult, it's not one you hate to use defensively, but now we're finally going to see a solo rotation, not from the character we expected though. Cactus Arms over here on the left side of the map, the beacon is about to open up just a few seconds away. Sunbreaker is going to be able to step on first, but Thor has arrived. Bird of Pluto still sitting at half HP in mid. Thor is going to be the target. Conquistador not losing too much HP, though, has Arc Druid's Fury, so feeling a little bit tankier, but no contest. The first beacon is going to go to the Sunbreakers. They deserve that beacon with the scoreline currently, as well as how well they are playing. I'm surprised that Joined uh -oh. Rumble is still here. <laughs> hey, he's not going to be here for much longer. Red Pepper sees you, and now nobody sees you. <laughs> and a second kill for Red Pepper. Gonna get out as well. Stripe just gonna focus on the purple buff. But the rats lost a little bit of HP. Fear No Evil is not up yet for Strife, but Fazzy's here. Might be able to hit a taunt. There's the Fear No Evil, but after the through the Cosmos got popped, maybe trying to burst down the rest of that HP and a good jump away. Gonna save them from Red Pepper. Sunbreaker's now still four strong on the left hand side. Bird of Pluto coming in. Golden Apple gonna land onto the Ganesh! And the line attack won't do it. Red Pepper survives on 100 HP, nearly finds a shutdown onto the Sunbreakers jungler. A little bit of a mixed call there from Sunbreakers. We had like four people pull the gold fear, and then we had the uh, boxing out, which was the Red Pepper. I'm surprised that they didn't just stay on the gold fear because of the threat that Red Pepper is right now for their team. Conquistador did not make the rotation over to that gold fear instead. Deciding to go ahead and push down, try to push down the right hand side at tier one. All tower standing for all teams right now, which I'm very surprised to see for the side of Kingslayers. They've done well at making rotations to be able to hold these towers. And as Nublet just showed us the gold and XP right there, you can see that Sunbreakers are pretty heavily in the lead, both in XP and gold right now. They need to go ahead and make a big move here if you're on the side of Kingslayers. And the big move might be a gold fury because that is the objective that you want to challenge if you don't want this game to start rumbling out of your direction. Speaking of rumbling, Jordan Rebel has a possible gank here from Fuzzy Wuzzy if he wants it. Sorry, and, if you're the, and if you're the Kingslayers for me, you have to make something happen on the left-hand side of the map. I mean, ADC just got to within one level down. The support's four level down. You need to close that gap. Red Pepper now looking at Bird of Pluto in the mid lane. Or just might be looking for their third, <laughs> third, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe second, maybe third red buff invaded the game. Either way, Bird of Pluto is not going to be too happy when they step behind the tower. Jack Tuff is still in mid here, and that Ganesh can do a lot of damage. But now that the Athena is here, the aggression might shift away, as indeed Red Pepper just going to walk across the lane and maybe look for the green buff, but it's already gone. Did you just comment on the, the difference of level in the supports, by the way? Because that is a 9 to, I think, what is that, 12? No, no, yeah, 9 to 12. Yeah. A 3 to 4 level difference between the two supports, which is crazy to see. And that dual lane. Ooh. 
The horse not gonna save you this time, Jointed Rumble Falls. It feels like everywhere Red Pepper goes, chaos ensues, and the fight's not done here in left. Everybody but the solo laners are here, and you talked about maybe seeing Kingslayers try to swing that Gold Fury. It might be the other side around. Sunbreaker's looking aggressive. Golden Apple, Apple gonna land on the Striker in the back, but Red Pepper on the Discordia. Bird of Pluto at about 200 HP. Striker takes down Fuzzy Wazzy. The Red Attack roll not gonna hit. Good Aegis, but it's not gonna matter. Bird of Pluto falls. Strife escapes, and you gotta think that's gonna be the first objective off the map going to the Sunbreakers. Yeah, that was not the Gold Fairy talk I was really talking about. I was looking for an actual Gold Fairy fight, so it would be on the Gold Fairy right here in this position. But with Hachiman getting picked there, with Jointa getting, getting picked in the duel lane in the early part of that fight, it made it very obvious for some Sunbreakers what the call was from there. And that is a three-man wipe, including the Gold Fury, which just swings their lead even further. But a great answer here from Kingslayers. If they can get this Pyromancer, it would be really good for them just to be able to get something back in their pocket. They do get the Pyromancer, but trouble has arrived. They are going to pick up the Runic Bomb. Love to see that. Cactus Arms is here, but so is Fazzy Wazzy. Striker coming in. Morgan Le Fay can find some big damage. Jarmic Pillar is not going to lock anybody down. Good teleport by Conquistador, but does find the knockup onto Fazzy. Fear no evil hits two. Both frontliners dropping low for the Sunbreakers, but Kingslayers aren't looking to fight. They want to disengage. Conquistador just gets into the air. Bird of Pluto falling in the mid lane. Red Pepper with her third kill of the match. Door chasing finds a stun, but on the backside, Cap and Chris has arrived. Now the Red Tasker goes into the through the cosmos. Is Red Pepper gonna re-engage? Low on health, Strife again finds a jump away. Mountain Archery is gonna secure the kill for Jointed Rumble. There's a shutdown. The X Ball still on the back. King Slayers are low, but the health bars for Sunburgers might not allow it. Fozzy Wazzy barely survives the Morgan Le Fay. Holy cow, that Athena was playing with fire with that back. Yeah, the, one of the laziest backs I've seen in a long time, especially when a Morgan Le Fay is right in front of you. Some of the longest reaching abilities in the game. You have Changa ultimate, and then you have Morgan Le Fay everything, because you can kill someone from a mile away. And Athena said, ah, I'll give you that chance, and gave her the chance she did. Was not able to take it away. Fozzy Wazzy and the Kingslayers find a kill onto the board and the Pyromancer. So this is kind of a win going their way. Only about 4k in the difference right now chronos pendant is what we're hovering for the athena which is an unusual and funny support pickup more taunts more happy people happy life happy wife type of stuff going on right here and so if you're gonna have a happy support i guess you have a chronos pendant how do you feel about that one kingfisher <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I think it's in the same grain of what I think of full damage solo laners. I don't know. I just don't think it needs to be built. That being said, you find some good value on it for Athena. The cooldown reduction is nice, and Athena already does a lot of damage. So getting a little bit of extra for one defense item might not make the difference. Now Stygian Beacon's going to open. We're going to see how impactful that Chronos Pendant is. Fazzy's here. Fear no evil. On a cap and Chris going to nearly kill them. Invalidon not going to ring true, though. Conquistador still looking for it. Finds a teleport. Are they going to find any other abilities? Cap and Chris finally falls, but on the other side, so does Fazzy Wazzy. The Athena deleted early, but nobody else dies from Kingslayers yet. If you're Kingslayers, you don't hate that trade. Support for an ADC never feels too bad. Might be more, though. Thor going to be messed out. Conquistador still looking for an escape. Not going to find it. A, a stun and a root going to spell the end there. Striker with their second kill of the engage. Sunbreakers once again take away the beacon and take away two kills to one. Yeah, this is typically when you would say something like, that's 10% more damage onto towers. And that is a massive thing for Sunbreakers right now because they're already looking at the mid T1. And not T1, Berta Pluto is the target for Red Pepper. Gets the big old answer because that is a kill onto someone who is the biggest player for the Sunbreakers right now. Strife looking to keep this fight going with no fear, no evil, but a great pick there for a little bit of an overreaching Red Pepper. 26 seconds into the grayscale, he will go. Nothing else will go the way of Sunbreakers right now as two people leave this lane, including Chibalanke, looking to go ahead and push down this left lane that already has a tower gone level 17 in a really good position if you're on Sunbreakers. Morgan Fay and Chibalanke, both level 17 and 18, super high right now. They are. You like seeing those high levels. If you're a Sunbreakers fan, especially onto the backline, means they're just going to be doing damage. 
And we talked about seeing the Kronos pendant from the Athena, and the unorthodox thing I like a lot more is that Breastplate of Valor, actually, from the Morgan Le Fay, not too uncommon of an item on some mages, especially like we highlighted in the desk, the less mobile ones. And find some value with that defense but now strife trying to make something happen jointed rumble is on the way over but with striker close in mid if i'm kingslayers not loving my chances here and liking them a little bit less jointed rumble gonna be the target strife blinks in gonna fight a big fear no evil cap and chris does not have the beads up and cap and chris gonna fall jointed rumble with their fourth kill of the match dharmic pillar is not gonna lock in anybody defender of olympus is out through the cosmos gonna land on one jointed rumble dropping even lower mounted archery gonna find the escape the Athena not going to be so lucky, Striker with their fifth kill of the match. And it's another one for one, although that time, I think it still favors the Kingslayers, just like last time. It's going to be an ADC for a support, but now Gold Fury, or Primal Fury, is going to be the call. This is risky, they don't have an ADC, but Berta Pluto, the only one here. Golden Apple is down, Berta Pluto might be in trouble. Stun lands from Sun Wukong, Sigil Mastery not going to hit. Roberta Pluto still so low. Somersault Cloud should spell the end, and indeed it will. Another Gold Fury and another kill over to the Sunbreakers. Another Gold Fury as well going the way of Sunbreakers. Push their lead to around, we see this next tick be around 5 point, I guess that's it right there actually, 5.287, 5.4. There you go, and their XP is around 9.2 right now. 13 to 5 is a scoreline. It tells a story that it should when you have this many kills ahead of the enemy team. Expect to see that amount of lead in the XP and the gold. As we said, Kingslayers need to make some bigger rotations, but this is not the start of it. A two Shiblanke is found over here trying to kill Conquistador, one of our favorite names to say in the entirety of the SDL. I love saying it during the draft. Now we get to say it during a game. This is a fire giant pool, possibly for Sunbreakers or a Pyromancer pool for them. I don't know if Kingslayers have the opportunity to answer here, but they kind of have to if they don't want this to roll and roll and roll out of their way. Pyromancer going to be the play, and it is going to fall to Sunbreakers rather easily. Now trying to get away, Strife dropping low. Humbus might be in trouble, uses the leap. Red Pepper knows they can hit the knockup, and indeed they do get stunned out immediately, though. Red Tasker still dropping low. It's going to be the Morgan Le Fay to pick up the kill. ADC is dueling it out. The Hachimon wins this time on the right side of the map. You wouldn't have guessed it. It's another one for one. The Kingslayers don't look like they're done yet. Fazzy Wazzy trying to find something onto Red Pepper. Goes onto the wrong target, though. Looks for the Morgan Le Fay. Oh, the Athena might have dropped a kill there, but now Jack Tough finding a lot of damage with the Dharmic Pillars. It's going to confirm one. Casey Stryker gets their seventh kill of the match. Still dropping back. Kingslayers might have overreached. An unfortunate mishap, but it's not going to spell the end of the world. It's only one death. They can certainly recover from that. They can certainly recover from it. 100%. And uh, speaking of recovering, these objectives are going heavily the way right now of Sunbreakers. We've seen one power merchant go the way of the Kingslayers, and then the next one go the way of the Sunbreakers. This next target is the Fire Giant. 23 minutes into this game, still a regular Fire Giant, which means that if Kingslayers want to give it up, they could. It would not be exactly the most opportune situation to do. I mean, giving the enemy team Fire Giant at any point in the game is not the opportune thing to do. But I, uh, I just want to see the Kingslayers make a move onto a, an objective and possibly more than one to one the fight. Let's go ahead and win a fight. Let's go ahead and get some bigger picks than even just the Sheep Lanka. Captain Crisco can go down every single time, but Casey Stryker currently sitting at seven and zero, and is really the main person on Sunbreakers that we need to be killing. That's going to be a big bonus when it finally happens. Fear no evil, not going to find anything. Cap and Chris is going to be able to find the dash out. Joined to the rumble now, dropping low. Silenced out. Red Pepper looking for their fourth kill of game. Doesn't have it yet. Golden Apple is going to land. Red Pepper takes a decent chunk of damage, and Kingslayers might be able to walk away. Stygian and Beacon going to open soon, and with that, the Titans will soon be on the map. Sunbreaker is going to get that beacon easily. Just like you said last time, now they're going to have 15% increased damage. If you're Kingslayers, that is something to worry about. I, If you're Kingslayers, I don't really see a land where you can test that. You might just have to sit back and wait. It's sadly what happened on the first two beacons as well as you had to wait the entire team. Kongibajor says, I'll take you on 1v5. Walking in, has to go into Anvil of Dawn, but will not make it up into the air. Kongibajor will fall. 6-16 is your score. Down one for Kingslayers. This is a 4v5 situation. Full health bars 
on almost everyone on Sunbreakers. They were walking towards the right side of the jungle at first, instead choosing to walk towards the left side of the jungle with the Gold Fairy coming up. This is a safe play from Sunbreakers, taking no chances, doing this by the book is what I would call it. And whether it's a good call or not, it will put the gold and the XP more and more and more and chip away at the favor and the, the favor they have in winning this match in the late game, especially as Berta Pulu is only level 17, Casey Striker level 20, looking strong on this Morgan Le Fay. We got to get the pick on to him. That might be their target, but they might not get a chance to do it. Athena Taunt is going to land on one. Prolongs her life for a little bit, but Cap and Chris is going to find it. Red Pepper with a beautiful 1v1 in the mid lane, taking down Strife. This, or the Hun Bats, Fear No Evil, not going to secure it for them. And now Sunbreaker is finally going to tail off towards that Gold Fury. Kingslayers might try to contest. I'm not going to lie, though, without the Golden Apple, without the Fear No Evil, I do not like them showing up for that. I would just leave it jointed rumble though, gonna experience that firsthand. Might have to use a mounted archery to escape and try to fight the Sun Wukong. PC Striker with the consuming power, not gonna find the last hit. Jointed Rumble survives. Now the Titan might be the call. The clone from Cactus Arms gonna fall with no contest. But Sunbreaker's now gonna break back towards the Titan. And now you might have an opportunity. Send your Titan down the mid lane. Go to the Fire Giant. I hope so. That's exactly what Sunbreaker should do. It's either that or push with your Titan. I think they're going to go ahead and call a push with their Titan here. I don't know if this is the right call, but it might play in their favor with that kind of Darby Pillars. It very well might. Sunbreaker is finally going to break off, though. They mm. are going to start going back towards the Fire Giant. But no, it's just going to be a Pyro call for now. They're going to get it easily. Runic Bomb going to go in pocket. The Titan's now down, so if they did have an opening on the Fire Giant, it's going to be gone now. All five members alive for Kingslayers. They're still sticking around, channeling backs. And uh, before the inevitable next team fight breaks out, I wanted to ask you, like, I think four minutes back, but it's been constant fighting since then. Yeah. When you look at these two ADC builds, they're all going for the same things, but a much, much different order. Is there one of those you kind of like more than the other in terms of getting items online at a better time? Early game executioner is always the target and it's just because it's a more fluid item in the early game to have instead of like a dominance. You're scaling your basic attack damage with dominance, but you don't have much to scale. That's the problem with dominance in the early game. With executioner, you're not really scaling much. You're 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 doing the scaling. Uh, with Executioner, and that's exactly what you want in the early game. I like the Furious Executioner on both of them. That's a smart decision, be going both of the proper uh, items. He hasn't gotten it yet on George Hood Rumble, but Brother Pluto finds himself in a rough position already. And just like that, the pacifism, pacifism period is over. Brother Pluto going to drop very quickly to Cap and Chris. I mean, it is late game now, so it doesn't matter what items they have at this stage of the game. Cactus Arms now taking a lot of damage. Big taunt lands from the Athena Conquistador up into the air. Sun Wukong up regaining health in the Somersault Cloud. Darmic Pillar is going to lock down one. The Athena falls. It's a five on three. And once again, Red Pepper with the 1v1 in the mid lane. The Hun bots cannot catch a break. Red Tasker with the kill. Five on two. Fire Giants a call. Sunbreakers solidifying their lead. We waited for 20, 28 minutes or 18 minutes to get Fire Giant. In my opinion, I, I know we've been calling for Fire Giant for a long time, but when I see the timer at 28 minutes, man, I'm like, darn it. Just another minute. Just another minute and a half, and we would have had Enhanced Fire Giant. I don't think there's any way they hold this for a minute and a half. They're going to go ahead and drop it right now because it, it's nice to have Fire Giant either way. But speaking of Fire Giants, this is not one. Keeps the door, finds himself in a bad position. Red Pepper does miss a stun, but it doesn't matter. They've got the damage. Conquistador is going to find a hammer out. Not going to happen for long, though. Cap and Chris with their third kill in the past two minutes. The X-Ball starting to really turn it on in this late game. That's kind of the stage you don't want the X-Ball to get to. Finding a lot of value, and it's not an enhanced Fire Giant. It's going to work kind of similar, though. They are going to be able to work their way across a map. We've touched on it a lot this game. They have a big lead. They have a very, very concrete one, too. I don't think they're going to care that it's not the big one. Sunbreakers now, they do find the tier 2 in mid. They're looking for the tier 2 in left. If you're Kingslayers, do you try to show up to that, or do you just kind of wait for a Phoenix engaged? What's your call there? I think you play a hard defense. I think this is a hard look for picks, possibly, and that's not what that was in the mid lane when they got the two. They got picked, uh, especially Cotton Keepstore on the right side of the map, getting picked right there. 
we're looking for a under phoenix in your favorite kill uh or in your favorite defense i was talking to the divine sunbreakers because i'm kind of helping out that team and i've talked about being in this position as a team entirely being in the position of the current king slayers and it's all about calculations you have to take fights that are opportune and in your favor so number one the a slot of that calculation would be what is your team doing as some breakers are getting the goal for you right now no challenge from king slayers what what is the first calculation do so a plus b equals c so a is going to be what is going on on your team is your team in the proper position to take a take a fight and if a works then what is number b b is what is the enemy team doing b is or is the team in a bad position? Are they making a mistake or are they doing the correct thing? If they're doing the correct thing, it's probably not the best to go ahead and take a fight in this in the position of losing. But if they're making a mistake, then you need to take that opportunity and escalate off of it. So a mistake, for example, right now would be if KC Striker walks into the bottom right hand side jungle and split pushes down the right hand side of the map. That's a mistake. And Sunbreakers and sorry, and Kingslayers should be able to make that C occur, make the solution occur, which is go and get that pick. So they're looking for these picks and these calculations and these opportunities right now as a 622 score is not in their favor whatsoever. But it could be if they look for those good opportunities. And they're certainly going to be on the lookout for them. Unluckily, though, Sunbreakers, I mean, they've been playing a very, very mechanically clean game. They haven't been getting caught out of position. They've been winning the fights when they need to. I mean, the, the door is never closed. Kingslayers are always going to have an opportunity back into this game. It's not going to be an easy one, though. Sunbreakers group up on the left-hand side. Oni minions marching down. This looks like it's going to be the Phoenix call. All five are here for Kingslayers. I'd love to see a big Fear No Evil in this fight. We might get to see it happen. Strife waiting by the door. The Oni wave, though, can die immediately. Sunbreakers do not make the engage just yet. All five are grouped up. Here it comes. Darmic Pillars is going to lock two inside. Fear No Evil in the back line hits all three. J Jointed Rumble is going to find Jack Tough, but now the health bars are low. KC Striker grabs one. Strife even lower. Going to fall to the Sun Wukong. Red Tasker chasing them all the way to the fountain. And just like that, Conquistador is going to fall as well. They're going to lose the Ganesh, but that might not be enough. They still have a tanky Sun Wukong in a 4 on 2. Verda Pluto makes it back to Fountain, regens. That might not be enough for Titan Push. Looking for another bird, but there's still a lot of damage. I can find a Cactus Arms dropping below half now. Sunbreakers, not a bad engage, but they only get one and they're going to have to retreat. I, yeah, I was talking about calculations and knowing when to engage and knowing when to occur. What a great ultimate from Strife. That was a four man fear no evil. And then they killed that Ganesha so fast. It was like the Ganesha was so out of position. Jack Tuff was, was, uh, was too far forward and just took a step out of the wrong position. And I love how Kingslayers took that opportunity to get that kill. One phoenix is not the win that sunbreakers probably expected to get with this fire giant but the win that they can get now is being ahead by almost 17k it's almost not even worth saying anymore because it's going to be just a comeback game right now for kingslayers they're gonna have to go ahead and take some wins here at some point and at where the win where those wins gonna have to be is gonna have to be when the opportunity shows itself but also this fire giant is now going to be enhanced, so they might want to show at least a little bit of face. Sadly, the phoenix that is down is the opposite side of the fire giant, so if someone's going to have to be in that left lane, making sure that fire waves don't push into the titan room. And the Humbats might not be the one they want to use to do it. Uh, fear no evil. I mean, I think it's probably the best or the best ability in the game for stealing objectives away and securing them. Luckily for them, though, Sunbreakers are not going to jump on it as soon as it spawns it looks like they want to find a pick first but pepper's gonna be looking for it they do have sun wukong around the back con keep the door caught out of position invil dawn not even gonna get channeled the damage is overwhelming red pepper on a killing spree now looking for another through the cosmos not gonna happen jointed rumble is able to find the kill massive three person taunt from athena that's gonna get the team out alive great play from fozzy wazzy kingslayers now able to walk away with their lives they're not going to be able to contest that fire giant more than likely, but the Athena with a good play saves the rest of the team. Great job from the Kingslayer's front line. There's no way that you don't feel the same way that I do, Kingfisher, right now, which is that Kingslayers could be winning these fights. It feels like they could, especially. These are the mechanics are there. 
the the abilities, but it's just the positioning. Kankivitor getting picks there was probably one of the most massive situations that would have led. If he was able to get the Anvil of Dawn off with full health or even half of his health bar, then there could have been beads pulled, kills gotten, because Bird of Pluto is putting out the damage right now as well as jointed rumble. But speaking of Bird of Pluto, not in a good position. We've seen this before. Slowed by Cactus Arms, a little bit damaged, lands onto the Discordia. Morgan Le Fay looking for something, is going to be able to find the Displacement, finds a Consuming Power after Casey Striker with, you, you know, only only their 10th kill of the match. N nothing, to, nothing to really scoff at there. The Morgan Le Fay going absolutely massive here for Sunbreakers. And yeah, we don't see any blue wards up by the Fire Giant, maybe just cut out a position. But even so, it looks good for the future. You still have the Fear No Evil, and you have an Athena, and quite honestly, that is all you need on a base defense. You can absolutely spell the end here. Some breakers are going to be looking for the engage. Ratatasker still in mid lane, going to meet the Hunbots for the third time this match. Might not just be engaging yet. Some breakers might be waiting for minions here on the right side as the as the junglers just have some fun on their own. Fun on their own is what they've been doing all game, it feels like, because oh. here's Red Pepper doing it again. There's a blink, there's a stun, Fear No Evil, gonna be beads out by the Red Tasker, dashes into a column though, finds the Acorn Blast, Strife is gonna die, so is this right side Phoenix, eventually, Kizzy Striker finds Conquistador, Immortal with 11 kills, Bazzy Wazzy gonna barely fall to Cactus Arms, now Golden Apple lands, Titan's gonna be the call, Red Pepper dropping low, has to step out, but it's a 5v2, Jointed Rumble gonna find an Oboproc to get the kill onto the Red Tasker, Titan half health. Sunbreakers on their retreat for the moment. They're not going to commit, but with Cap and Chris finding a kill, they're still going to walk away. They have two tanks. They're going to look for a mid Phoenix. That may have been an end call. Cactus Arms can be chasing down Bird of Pluto. Discordia survives. And now the minions are pouring in. Here's the end call. Cap and Chris going to survive looking for one more kill. Might not get it before the Titan falls. And the Titan eventually will. Darmic Pillars come out. The damage lands. Sunbreakers take game number one. And a big game one and a big win there for the Sunbreakers. They're able to find the first match here, the best of three. They do it in convincing style, 33 to 6. That's a pretty big scoreline, but before you go any further, got to give credit to Kingslayers. They held in that match a lot longer than they probably had any right to. 37 minute game. It did not, it, it, it never was boring in a moment. There were blue buffs being stolen. There were ganks occurring at two minutes in the game on both sides of the map, enough so that Nublet didn't know where to be on the map it was so much going on so i we love to see this i i am blessed to have be, be able to watch this game unstoppable sometimes have some of the best games we've ever seen in casey striker with one of the best plays we have ever seen from morgan Le Fay. and this is a new division it used to be a challenger but now it's called unstoppable so this might be one of the mvp forerunners for casey striker 11 and oh with that much damage, with the help of Captain and Crisco and Red Pepper, just a great combination of plays there from Casey Stryker. I can't say too much more about it besides, wow. You said it yourself, the division's called Unstoppable this year, and that's exactly what the Sunbreakers looked like. Yeah. I mean, they were dominant from probably past the first 10 minutes. I mean, Kingslayers did have a really good early game. They were able to get first blood. They stayed competitive despite losing a few early kills. But in that late game... I mean, Sunbreakers played that very close to perfectly. They got the objectives when they needed to. They grouped up great, had good team fights. And if you lead into game number two, obviously, if you're Kingslayers, you want to force this to game number three. What do you have to do? Is it a gameplay change? Do you need to ban the Morgan Le Fay, ban the Ratatasker? What has to change to get you to that game three? We talked a little about focus bans and how in Unstoppable and generally Divine as well, we see some a lot of focus bans coming out. And I think that they might want to go ahead and do some focus bans here. I think that Morgan Le Fay is a great call of a focus ban to go ahead and do here. I also think that maybe we go ahead and walk away from the Thor solo and we look for something a bit more, if we're going to play like that, like a heavy war choir type of style, right? Just walk 1v5 at them like on Kipsador was and getting picked a lot of the time. Let's pick a god that allows you to do that. So maybe we take away the Sun Wukong because that's a god that can walk at them. 1v5 and maybe we don't we see if they don't ban Jormungandr 
another god. You can walk at them 1v5 and then go into World Serpent and escape. So if we can go ahead and get a better person in the soul lane, or sorry, a better god choice in the soul lane that allows for you to escape or possibly to engage in a better form when you're out of position, great. I think that would be a great situation to be if you're on Kingslayer. So take away that Sun Wukong and possibly go ahead and move away from the Thor as well as ban that Morgan Le Fay. Great choice. But here we go. We're already in it already going to be getting back in and i think i agree with you about the thor thor can certainly do good if they're ahead but you need to be ahead in order for the thor to really strive in that lane so maybe if they do kind of change up their strategy and how they approach it it can maybe work but it's also a little bit of a risk you know high risk high reward play you can certainly see the high rewards not going to be target banning yet and another one we haven't mentioned that i think is inherently because of the god i would never really advocate to target ban an, an x ball but Cabin Chris with an insane amount of damage, able to combo their ultimate extremely, extremely well with the rest of the team, had a really good game. Like I said, I, I don't know if that's an X-Ball thing. I think it's just a Cabin Chris is really good at ADC thing, but it's certainly going to be in the back of their minds. Cabin Chris is really good at ADC. We've seen, uh, as you said, a returning name here, and uh, I hope to see another big pick out of the ADC, but instead banning the Hachiman, I didn't think it was that big. I guess maybe it was. It was the most damage coming out of Kingslayers. It was the thing they were hanging on a thread from was that Hachiman, and so they wouldn't remove that. Kingslayers opting to ban the Sun Wukong instead of the Morgan Le Fay, which is not the call that we had made. So I, I would not be surprised if Sunbreakers either second pick that Morgan Le Fay or if Kingslayers took it away. I'd probably be expecting the Kingslayers to take it away. Uh, the bans are similar-ish to game one. There's still some pretty good meta picks up here. We've talked about the Jormungandr. Thor is still up. Maybe would have more success you in the jungle. But we're going to see why it was banned. It's going to be the bird of Pluto Giannis. Oh. And I, I, I won't lie. I mean, they needed to get that in the top three. We saw target banned in the second phase. I don't know if KC Striker plays Giannis, but I don't know if that's something you need to top pick. Regardless, though, we've talked about pocket picks and how they work out, and we're going to see in this game if it is all it's cracked up to be here for the Kingslayers. Bird Pluto on the Giannis might be the pocket pick that he, they need. We talked about Discordia last game. Did not show I up as much as we wish it no would have. Some good golden apples, but not in the way that it should have been doing the amount of damage. Ganesha Thor are going to be the answers from Sunbreakers. Taking the Thor away from the soul lane, but it might be going into the jungle this time. I hope to see a Thor in the jungle because seeing some good Anvil of Dawns in multiple lanes is a really cool thing Death to see. Taking away that. the Sheep Belong, <laughs> taking it away. <laughs> That's really cool. I guess we're banned the Hachi and we'll take your X spell then. Fair enough. I can see why they banned the Hachi. Rumble had a good game and taking the X ball away. Yorm and are we going to see it? We're going to see it. It's the Yorming under solo what we all wanted and i'll yep. piggyback on your last point i'd love to see red pepper take that thorn to the jungle because i mean they had a great game on the red tasker you can counter a red tasker there's really no good way to counter a thor no no good way especially with the two bands that have already occurred in the jungle or three bands. maybe not we're just gonna have the same matchup this is a oh wait yeah no yeah this is a sunbreakers with the red tasker again uh because Man, Red Pepper did do really well on it and found himself in great positions the entire game. Found themselves in great positions. I, I wanted to say the answer to Thor is generally the Bakasura or the Kali, the basic attackers. Because all that he has the answer for is the wall. And once the wall is down and they have Hasten Fatalis or especially with Bakasura, they have Regurgitate. You can't use your axe to get out and you're dead. You're dead meat at that. But we can move on from the junglers because that's probably going to be a Ratatasker jungle, I would assume. But both of these gods can play jungle, Ratatasker and Thor. They can also bl both play solo lane, so a little bit of a toss-up. Given last game, I'd certainly expect the Ratatasker to be on Red Pepper. And I think I do like the Thor solo a little bit more on this team. I mean, Ganesh is a very strong support, and especially if it goes like we saw last game, we're going to see a lot of early ganks, early buff invades with Red Pepper there on the red side of the map, so that certainly favors your Thor solo more than the enemy one. But Jormungand are going to be a very hard god to displace. And a Poseidon lock-in. Now, there's always a tiny chance that that's a Poseidon ADC, but I'd certainly expect that in the mid lane, right? I Maybe would not. certainly expect it as well. I would hope that they would go a physical last pick here with how Captain Chris played last game. Let's not flex it too much. The Shibalanke was really nice looking, but Poseidon is a good answer to Shibalanke as long as his beads are down. 
because he has to get beads if he wants to counter the the whirlpool. Uh, Sobek is a great pick here. We were talking about displacing people. Sobek is made to exactly do that with the pluck. And this this Kingslayers team, I said the name of the game last game for Kingslayers was CC. The name of the game for this time is like once again kind of towards the CC area. But as you said, it's displacement. Did you just make a call? I think you might have just made a chair to wise call because that's a your mere hover. I, I mean, I don't know. I could never dream of being a chair two, but <laughs> I, if if I had to guess, and it is just a hover. I mean, what was the team last year that kept hovering Ymir and switching it? That was Divine Sunbreakers, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that just kept hovering Ymir and switching it, so maybe it got a little bit of that mentality. We'll have to wait and see. But the Sobek lock-in, like you said, really a lot of displacement. A support that's really kind of overlooked a whole ton for how good their kit is. I'm looking at this Kingslayer's team. It's chaotic. I love it. It's it's really chaotic though. If you're Sunbreakers, Face that's really difficult to respond to. And gosh dang it! I thought I knew it. I didn't. It's gonna be Poseidon mid. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm the chair two here this game this today, so I made the right call. But you made one of the most like wild calls ever, dude. <laughs> Poseidon that you see would have been one of the coolest things to see this game as a chair two. I would have loved to see it. I know Kingfisher would have as well. A Poseidon ADC makes the game very interesting and would have been the the topic to talk about. But instead, it will be the Heimdall. So we see people getting thrown into the air, and we will follow them sometimes. But with the Naja ban from them and the Kepri ban, you had to think this Heimdallr and Poseidon were in the books for them at one point. Because those are two gods that can answer Heimdall, especially because right before he throws them in the air, just go ahead and get Scarab's Blasting on them. And then the same thing goes for Windfire Wheels, is if you, if you can remove... Heimdallr from the fight, then he will not throw someone up into the air. So it's about who can throw who up into the air first. So I think Sunbreakers had a pre preemptive look at these picks and bands and said, we want the Heimdallr and, and the Poseidon, so let's go ahead and get rid of these two gods. I like how Sunbreakers comp has rolled out here. Smart play call for them, and that does mean they were hovering the Ymir just to troll us. We wouldn't <laughs> expect anything else from Sunbreakers up here. And, uh, I mean, talk about the Heimdall and all the good things the ultimate can do. On this team, when they crash down, if they're not already dead, they're gonna be. Because looking at the rest of this team comp, it is so, so punishing on anybody that gets CC'd, anybody out of position. It's just not gonna stop a Sunbreakers. They don't want to force it to game three. They want to win right here. We're gonna see if they can in-game. Regardless of which team wins, it's going to be an exciting game number two. One of the wildest team comps, or really two of the wildest team comps, and probably two of the most exciting we've seen this season. It's going to be a good game regardless of the outcome, but Thor almost iced a jungle buff. Not going to happen, though. That really would have been a way to start it. That would have been a way to start it for sure. I want to talk a little bit about Strife, because I think I've seen Strife on Pele before in Scouting Grounds games, because... I remember either seeing it or possibly even playing against it in, scr not scrims, but uh, in-houses before. I think this is a pretty good pick coming out of Strife, and I hope to see good things from it. The only thing I don't see good from Strife right now is the godlike title. Keep keep in mind that we got to turn off titles, you guys. <laughs> Ooh, titles are a big no-no. Hopefully, it shouldn't take away too much, but now Strife already getting aggressive. Wouldn't expect anything less from a Pele KC striker dropping low, but Berta Pluto, ooh, does find a pretty good unstable Vortex. Not going to be enough for a kill, though. Red Pepper ticks over to level 3, but so does the Giannis. And now if you're Kingslayers, you have to find a way to slow down the Red Tasker this game. Absolutely ran the early game last time. Cannot happen again. How do you slow someone down? You do it by placing down wards and possibly by making preemptive ganks if you're on the side of Kingslayers. We need to go ahead and be in a more aggressive position. But speaking of ganks, he's already here and ready to go. He did this last game where he came to the shield buff, but then he got a kill right afterwards. That was in the dual lane. That was in the soul lane. So this is going the opposite direction this time. Last game, it was Strife on the left that found the first kill to be answered by Red Pepper, but this time they're both going to be here. Fazzy Wazzy already dropping low, and you said it yourself, countering ganks, wards, they're going to use one of them here. The Pele matching the rotation very well. 
Maybe Sunbreaker's expecting that after Strife went that way last game, but Red Pepper probably wanted to get a pick there, and I bet Khan Keep the Door can breathe easy. Not a two minute gank on the solo lane. Yes, Khan Keep the Door is praying up to the gods and saying thank you so much for the help this time, but Cactus Arms doesn't even need the gank because he's getting a lot of poke onto this Jormungandr. Free walls, free axes, sometimes can allow, sorry, free hammers can allow for that to happen. There's a god with axes, but he is not in this game. That would be chalk. And I I hope to see Conquistor be able to be present in these team fights near the late game. So that would be including getting these blue buffs and getting some better situations. A skin is that probably we're zooming in onto it because it's a cool skin. But uh, yes, the axes that he does have are on Heimdaller as well, but a cool skin included. But Valhalla Vice is a very cool skin. No, nothing can really top the baseball Heimdall skin for me personally, uh, but you know, Heimdall has such good skins. I mean, that Minotaur one a few years back, Ooh. maybe not a few years, I, I might be too old for this. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> now Keek Slayer spread out across the map and Conquistador already ticked over to level five. So you'd think even if Red Pepper does gank over here again, Jormungandr ult gets you out nearly immediately and very, very safely. I like that pick, and I'd certainly expect Red Tasker to maybe gank other lanes. We'll have to wait and see, though. Solo laners still brawling it out. I mean, wouldn't expect anything other. And of note, four minutes in, no buffs have been stolen yet. No buffs have been stolen yet, which means that I... I wonder what's going through Red Pepper's mind, because last game... They were playing it very aggressively. They were already at this blue buff ready to go and attack it. But speaking of aggressiveness, there's a fight over here that's a level 5e, level 4 fight. Certainly think that has to favor the Sunbreakers. They're backing up from it, though. I mean, hmm, I maybe would have chased that if I was them. You certainly have the advantage. Like you said, they're level 5. All relics are up. Not going to happen, though. But now Red Pepper is in left lane. Conquistador does still have the ultimate. Can certainly get out of trouble if they need to. Red Tasker, though, is going to have to wait a full minute if they want to pull off that blue invade again. <laughs> you said this last game, you'll say it this game, but uh, that was so funny last game when he was there 30 seconds early. This time, they're there a minute early, ready to go if they want to take this buff. Um, I'm seeing a lot more... This is four minutes into the game. What was it? What was the score last game? I think it was already three or four to one in the favor of Sunbreakers. So Kingslayers already either making better moves or Sunbreakers are just not playing as aggressive as they were in the previous game. I think that can already be said for Red Pepper, who is already level 5, and so is Strife. I want to see a big gank here from Red Pepper, as I'm already itching for it. We saw it last game. We're not seeing it this game. Get a kill, Red Pepper. Let's go. Here it is. Oh, they're looking for it. The portal already used by Yana's not going to have the maneuverability. Kraken finds a lot of damage. Good beads, though, on the side of Giannis. Like you said, you want to see those big ganks from Red Pepper, but it's so difficult. I mean... Who do you gank? Giannis gets away immediately. Maybe you gank the Ganesh. They don't get away immediately. Sorry, the Sobek rather going to be launched into the air by Heimdall. Going to be taken down as well. Cap and Chris with the first blood and it answered my own question, I guess. <laughs> and the gank is coming out from Red Pepper. As you said, World Serpent is a great answer. Strife is around the wall just waiting for something to happen, but nothing's happened. Berta Pluto has an answer in the dual lane, but instead a big ultimate coming out from Strife that will not secure the kill on to Cactus Arms. He will escape, but the kill and the escape will not occur for Cap and Crisio in the dual lane. Jointed Rumble will get one going his way. So this is a one-to-one -one game. That was the name of last game in the early game was one-for-one -one trades in the team fight. come 10 minutes. This is not 10 minutes. This is five minutes in the game. We have kills going both sides of the map right now. And I love to see it coming from Kingslayers. They have answers this time. They do, and if you're a Kingslayers fan, certainly want to see them push it to game three. And uh, we've, we've already talked so much about, you know, what we think they need to do, what the strengths of the team comp are. But on the side of Sunbreakers, you have a very aggressive team comp, especially early levels. I'd almost be surprised that you're only a thousand gold up six and a half minutes in. They're certainly going to want to flex their muscles as this game goes on. They're going to be punishing for sure. And we said at the start of last game, it didn't really pan out. But seeing that Thor leave the lane, rotate over, find big anvils at dawn, it's going to be very, very punishing with his team comp. I'd love to see Cactus Arms maybe make a rotate, but for the beacon, I think that's the first time we saw it last game. Yeah, we would love to see the rotation come out. This is a different god, This uh, sorry, a different player on a, the same god 
as the previous game in the soul and we like we would love to see it as a level five rotation that sometimes can't happen sometimes it has to happen at the first beacon which is around 13 minutes i would expect to see a rotation around the 13 minute mark as it's a lot safer to make a rotation possibly excuse me into about a four team rotation because generally you're gonna have big rotations into the beacon but speaking of rotations red pepper in a rough position with strife right around the corner decides to walk away from this fight something you would not say red pepper was doing last game was walking away from those types of fights not away from any of them, gonna catch Strife out in the jungle, able to find a stun, looking for a spin around Red Pepper now, dropping low, Volcanic Lightning used, Red Tower's gonna, gonna dash away channels through the cosmos, chasing the Pele down, I would pull off if I'm Red Pepper, gonna jump into three though, not gonna hit, oh, was too long in the air, crashes down, Bird of Pluto able to find the kill, now Kevin Chris caught, well, not caught, in his own Dharmic Pillars, Strife just gets down from the Through the Realms, Captain Chris falls to Jointed Rumble, KC Striker still chasing it out, Kraken finds a ton of damage, Jointed Rumble falls, Fazzy Wazzy still trying to chase down Bird of Pluto, not finding the damage, onto the Poseidon, just like that, the battle is gonna subside, and again in the solo lane, we almost have another kill, this time onto Cactus Arms. Kagif's door must be feeling a lot better on the Storm again in this game, because we did not see that last game, but also... I'm so surprised that Red Pepper is playing this passively because he was in a great position to get that gank off. And speaking of Pangivdor feeling really good, going for the steal will not get it. And it actually ends up getting, oh, he actually ends up, no, he does not get it. He does not get it because we see a, a blue around the Cactus Arms, but World Serpent will come out to secure his own life. But Strife is here and ready to make this rotation if need be. Red Pepper is playing with fire here. Strife's right there. Red Pepper doesn't know it. Through the cosmos, not up yet. Red Pepper does find a stun. Strife has to blink forward. Uses the volcanic lightning. Still can't find the kill. Beautiful wall from Cactus Arms. Red Pepper might walk away. Conquistador still chasing. Not gonna find it. And I don't know how the Ratatasker lived through that. That could have been very, very costly there from the Sunbreakers. Oh, and it is a massive through space of time from all the way at the tier one tower. What a shot by Bird of Pluto. That's why they banned it. That's why they banned it. And that's why we said this might be a pocket pick right here for Bird of Pluto. That's a snipe right there, baby. Through space and time, a mile away, and and that's like a that's a Barry Bonds into the into the ocean right there type of level hit. And speaking of hits, we have a fight here in the duel lane that's not going to end up being that much. But Captain Christio looking very comfortable on this Heimdall, the same as Bird of Poodle looking very comfortable on this Giannis. I wanted to go ahead and add up some stuff for you real quick, which is that right now. <laughs> KC Striker is 12 and 0 if you want to combine both games and so we might as well just go ahead and start counting up this one because I don't know if he's going to die on this Poseidon this game either. Poseidon, I, I would say there's not much maneuverability when you get dove, but they played Morgan Le Fay last game, so I can't. And now Jointed Rumble is going to be forced to dash away. Kraken, now they're 13 and 0. It is godlike across two games for KC Striker. And a great start to the game. Uh, we were wondering if that Poseidon would have the same impact as the Morgan Le Fay if this pace continues. Not going to be a question any longer. Now Red Pepper still might be looking for trouble here on the left side of the map. Bird of Pluto does not even want to mess with him though. Red Tasker, two levels down to the honest, but still just as scary. Both of these millionaires are just as scary as can be. But speaking of scary, man, I keep coming back to this dual lane and seeing that Crab and Crisio is just poking out jointed rumble the entire time. Keep in mind that Joiner Rumble last game was the top damage for Kingslayers, and they actually banned out his Hachiman, removing it from the table. I I would not I would expect, yeah, oh. this to happen. A dive. <laughs> not wanting to use the ultimate now through the realm's not gonna happen. Ooh, Cap and Chris maybe could have secured that if they ulted there for the distance. Not gonna want to risk it though, Fazzy Wazzy is on the way over. Sobek not gonna find the CC in time to disrupt. And the Heimdall gonna get away. And I know we talked a little bit last game about ADC builds, and now we see this x ball going a Transcendence instead of the Devo's Gauntlet. Do you like that more than the Devo's on that character? Kind of what's your take on that? Because we've seen two different builds now. We have seen two different builds, and I... I like to have life still early on my Shibalankes, especially because you can turn off his one if you want to, even though it consumes so much mana, it, it still is not the exact answer that you want to have. You want to have 
a lot of life steal. That's the name of the game for, for ADCs right now, and you're probably going to find that out as these fights continue to go on because Heimdall is going to be able to sustain even longer. But here's that rotation coming in from Thor. We'll see what the impact is. Fuzzy Wazzy caught out in the middle of the beacon. Only half HP, though. That is one tanky Sobek Strife. Nearly taken down at the back. The Pele is going to have to retreat. But this time, Kingslayer is going to be the ones on the aggressive. Anvil Dawn finds two Cactus Arms with the big double stun wall. Not going to find anybody. Cabin Chris has arrived. One member sent through the realms. It's the X-Ball sent packing. Lands in. Going to be taken down nearly immediately by the Heimdall. Cabin Chris finds her second of the game in the beacon. Still is going to be taken by Sunbreakers. They're fourth over two games. Now, Gold Fury is the target. They don't have any great things to steal with here if you're Kingslayers. Pele's the closest with the Volcanic Lightning. Berta Pluto looking around the back. If I'm the honest, you need to be careful. Heimdall spots him out. Gold Fury is going to fall to the Sunbreakers. Strife dashes in, though, looking for a kill. Not going to happen. Red Pepper gets away. Now Strife may be in trouble. Strife is going to fall down eventually to Cap'n Chris Conquistador. Finding a lot of damage. Fazzy Wazzy looking for the damage also, but a huge double stun by Cactus Arms. They find one. Berta Pluto still close. Casey Striker chasing them down. And the Sunbreakers finally going to end their pursuit and their pursuit, as well as get the cherry on the top. They get the gold fairy as well as those two kills. It's all you could dream of as a Sunbreakers fan. 4K going their way in, well, 3K going their way, both in gold and XP, just thanks to that gold fairy and those two kills. Four to six is the score line. Sunbreakers, this is what they did last game, not in this exact fashion. It was much more dominant, but I think this could be the start of the role for them if they'd like it to be. Red Pepper thinks it is because he is, or sorry, they are in a great position right now to take whatever they want to and Rumble might be the choice. It looks like that's going to be the option indeed. Red Pepper looking for the damage. Darkest of Nights is going to come out through the X-Ball. Might save them for a moment. Captain Chris again not going to use it through the realms. Through space and time though does not connect. Red Pepper dashes away. Ooh, and uh, both sides there may become a little bit closer to death than they were counting on. I'm surprised that Captain Crisio has not just thrown this ultimate out every two seconds because it's such a good ultimate, especially like a Naja Windfire Wheels. Just displace them, put them in a bad position where they can't do much. But instead here, he could easily dive Jorinja Rumble like he did the previous time. Just deciding to go ahead and go for the shield camp, keep that farm going up. Already a level ahead, could push that to two levels ahead if they would like to strife. Gonna make a little bit of a later rotation here, see if we can maybe ca catch Captain in a bad position, but instead we'll find a ward on the map. Just go ahead and clear that one out. We said this last game, or I said this last game, I can say it again. I think we need to be looking for some good picks if we're on Kingslayers, and this is not the start of it. Oh, Conquistador will fall very quickly thanks to a rotation from Casey Striker. What is he now? Uh, that's godlike. We're, yeah, we're at 14. Oh, wait, yeah, so 11 plus 3 is 14. 14 and 0. My goodness Casey Stryker I said it MVP MVP the chants are coming show you Otanti style all right exactly Otanti's gonna be chasing MVP just like Stryker here <laughs> and again Cap and Chris not diving under tower I mean on some ADCs I wouldn't question it as much but the fact that with that sword you can see any ganks Cap and Chris been very good about warding their side of the map I might be looking for it Jointed Rumble scared though, just gonna use the Darkest of Nights as a precaution. There it goes, finally gonna happen. Jointed Rumble uses both relics, does not matter. Cap and Chris being extremely patient, finally finds a kill. But now Pele's here, the teleport is down, but Strife taking so much damage. Volcanic Lightning can't find an Aegis Amulet out from the Heimdall. Just gonna tag in Bird of Pluto now looking for the kill, and they find it. The tag team cannot be stopped. Kingslayers find a kill there to answer for one. And now Fazzy left alone to 1v3 under the tier 1 tower. Oh, oh not going to happen though. Big freaking <laughs> double stun and KC Striker with their fourth of the match. 15-0 for KC Striker over two matches. This is a crazy play from KZ Striker. I'm going to stop saying their name though because there are other members of this team including Red Pepper which has not done as well this game. Currently 0-2, wishing for more. Looking at this dual lane, this, the, the soul lane again is Casey Stryker. Nothing there for them at this moment. I'm trying to create some room, possibly a fight here for Kingslayers. I think that that's exactly what Khan Kiefdor thinks, but his teammates might not think the exact same way because there is the anvil down, uh, down on the ground. Now Conquistador being stunned out, drops to the grave through the Cosmos. Use Strife looking low, looking dead. Red Pepper finds his first of the match. 
finally gets one after a little bit of a dry spell, nearly 17 minutes in, starting to look like the Ratatasker of last game, Fazzy Wazzy, still chasing it down, along with Berta Pluto, I think wisely not going to pursue any further. Not only is that Ganesh very close, but also, again, does have a few levels. I mean, that Ganesh has been impressive with their farming these past few games. But now, Heimdall, still looking for more, still has three of the realms up, and gonna use it again. Knows there's no relics for the X-Ball jointed rumble. Should fall extremely soon. Finds a rush away, though. Now being chased by all three members, Red Tasker might be the one to find it. Red Pepper doesn't find the stun, not going to find the damage either. It's going to be Cap and Chris with their fifth of the match. Sunbreakers once again go big and once again going to turn their sights to the Gold Fury. Gold Fury is a great call here to continue to push this lead again. Textbook play style, textbook everything. Cactus Arms is here to try to block out just a couple. There's a chance here for Kingslayers to possibly steal this, but Sunbreakers will secure it and possibly a kill into Berta Pluto as he is in a rough position getting hit by a hammy here twice and then brought down Captain Chris with a sixth kill of the game. Going into the seventh, double kill for Captain Chris, yo. And that's what you want as a Sunbreakers fan. And I think there are a lot of those after last season. This looks like the Sunbreakers of last season in every single division besides Challenger. I mean, uh, pretty much, and I feel like there would have been a Sunbreakers, a Challenger, but we didn't use the name, certainly. Maybe had a chance there, Kraken, not going to land. Great preemptive dash there by Jointed Rumble. World Serpent going to be used. Yormungadr trying to find some value. Red Pepper dropping low. Red Pepper still low. Yorm still looking for the kill. Going to eventually find it. Conquistador with her first of the match. Now caught on the wrong side of a Thor wall and caught in the grave. Casey Striker with a double kill. Now it feels like last game, Sunbreakers up 16-6. to Fazzy Wazzy tries to get a pluck, beads out like the attempt from the Sobek, but they do not like the result. As a Phoenix is going to fall 19 minutes into the game, and this is going quick. Big through space of time, going to end the damage, but nothing else. Capricorus chases them out. Berta Pluto has to walk back to the base, but they did get a tier 1 tower off of it. <laughs> tier 1 tower, baby. Let's go. What a win. Strife, can it go ahead and split push this entire time? I think it might almost be necessary with how how hard farming has been they are currently 10k behind in gold and that xp is not in their favor at all 9.8 10k going against them teleporting right now is captain crisco all across the map kind of jumping maybe a little bit of lag going on trying to get to this beacon as fast as possible this will be a currently 6-0 in the way of beacons in the favor of Sunbreakers because, or is that a 5 0? Because the, the Titans are not spawning as of, yeah, it's a 5 0, right? Yeah, yeah, 5 0. Whew. And we just got to look at the gold charts, and even though it's a big lead from Sunbreakers, they were dead even until 12 minutes into this game. Kingslayers, again, had a very, very good start to this early game. Like we said last time, there's time to pull it back, but they gotta start acting proactively. They need to turn the Jets on now. Runic Bomb gonna be picked up by the Thor. We're gonna send Cap and Crisio back to base. Might be teleporting if they go for the fire giant. Looks like that's not gonna happen yet though. Who wants a 20 minute fire giant? Might be a little bit overrated. But that fire giant gonna be a lot tougher this game than it was last. Cause I mean, last game they had the fear no evil. It's a great steal tool. You gotta be there to use it. They can sit that Giannis in base and he can steal every single one of those <laughs> objectives. I would not be surprised if he did. Berta Pluto is one of those guys that is one of those people that that can snipe from a mile away we already saw it this game once and a fire giant is a much larger target no longer looks like a surter because surter is now a god it looks just a bigger stale thing but speaking of stale things strife dying has been the name of the game currently oh and three but speaking of another not stale thing eight and zero king fisher eight and zero this is a god with little to no escape besides moving fast and he is playing it to a legendary level a good portal there by bird of pluto to get themselves out of trouble ratatasker's not done red pepper wants another bird of pluto still going to be the target oh with a good portal under the feet red pepper expecting it though dives another way and yeah, you said it, the Poseidon is on fire, and I feel bad for Strife, never had a chance to live last time, Berta Pluto might not have one this time, drops himself through a portal now, caught in the middle of the Dharmic Pillars, not gonna take much damage though, blast through the wall through space and time, might have cost them, and it has, Casey Striker with their ninth 
Cactus Arms now gonna land onto two jointed rumble dropping low, so is Fazzy Wazzy. Cactus Arms gonna be taken down by the Jeep Lonk. And now a big crack and lands and a big kill. Casey Striker with the triple. Are they gonna get the Penta? Oh, I would love it, but it's not gonna happen. Kingslayers are gonna back away from the fight. Close to it, but Sunbreaker's just gonna settle for another tier two tower. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> This is going to be another tier 2 tower, but that Phoenix is also in the eyes of Captain Crisio and Jack Tuff. Jack Tuff, J Casey Stryker knows the life that they have right now. They are so far back in the in the times where it's a questionable call because they know that they currently have zero deaths across two games. 7 to 21 is the score. Funny enough, 7 times 3 equals 21, so 3 times the lead. Going the way of some records right now, Kingslayers need to close this lead. And I said it last game, calculations, opportunities. You need to go ahead and take those when you have them. I think an opportunity right now would possibly be Pepper in the right side of the map by himself pushing down a T2. Let's go ahead and make a rotation over here and get the kill. Strife is going to say, I'll take the 1v1 if I have to. Not going to take it because Cactus Arms just teleported in to a ward and standing there dauntingly. Slayers did have a word on Cactus, knew they were there. Cactus Arms just gonna have to retreat, and you're doing way too much math for me this early in the morning. Fazzy Wazzy finds a pluck, Conquistador trying to get the damage out. Their damage dealers are not there yet, and it's an easy anvil on away from Cactus. Honestly, don't even know if they needed to use that. But, we always say it, better safe than sorry. Thor gonna save their life, and now with Oni minions marching down the waves. You think this is going to be an opportunity for Fire Giant here for Sunbreakers? They're not looking to push with these minions at all. Maybe now, grouping up in mid, possibly a little bit of indecision, but we haven't seen that at all this set. Hard to think there's not a plan behind it. Strife going to be forced to use Volcanic Lightning in order to get away from the Ratatasker. Now, Pele doesn't have a big ability for being in this team fight, and Sunbreakers starting it. Kingslayers, you think they have to know it's going down. Maybe just don't want to contest because it's not enhanced, but... I'd at least throw, throw us through space and time there. Not gonna happen though. It's up, yeah. Through space and time is up and you have Kronos Pendant on Giannis. It just makes sense to go ahead and throw it that way. Kingfisher and I would have thrown the ultimate that way, but there probably is a reason or a thought process going through Bird of Pluto's mind right now. Probably a little bit of frustration as well because this game is not going in their favor and Strife Ooh. in a bad position. Almost caught, lazy backing, not gonna happen though. Red Pepper blinks forward, finds a dash, finds a stun, finally beats, gonna be used from Strife. Might be a little bit too late, through the cosmos, gonna happen. Conquistador will try to save their jungler. Oh, and a beautiful blink from Strife, saves her life. Holy cow, lightning fast, through space and time, not gonna connect. And maybe honest, it's just saving it for a potential escape. I mean, no wards on the right side. Maybe didn't even know the fire giant was going down. But now the final tier two on the map is gonna fall to Cap and Chris and Jack Tuff. Jointed Rumble, still playing pretty close. Might be hit by Ganesh. Not gonna happen though. Escapes fine. And now the Phoenix Siege happening on two fronts. Gibalant playing with fire uses the Aegis and gets away though. All the King Slayers living through that. Oh, maybe not strike for much longer. <laughs> Into the air, Strife does go. Sunbreakers will have the big ultimate right here from Casey Striker. Will get the beads and Aegis out of Verda Pluto. And speaking of flying through the air, Strife did end up falling. Wind coming back down. Fozzy Wazzy level 13, taking almost half of their health bar just from walking into a whirlpool. Casey Striker having that every two seconds must be feel pretty daunting as a member of the Kingslayers. Verda Pluto trying to solo defend mid against both Cactus Arms and Red Pepper oh. will not work. Can't defend against the Runic Bombs though. Bird of Pluto gets through the wall, not gonna matter. Red Pepper picks up the kill con. Keep the door dropping low on the right side. Fazzy Wazzy now the only member standing between Kingslayers and a set loss. It's a hard task for the Sobek, nearly impossible, and it's not gonna happen. Right Phoenix Falls, left has respawned, but I don't think they care. Sunbreakers in just as convincing fashion as game one are gonna end this set with the 2-0. Oh, oh, but not before the last kill. <laughs> Casey Stryker, finally, gonna find the 14th kill, finds a godlike, and now this set's over. The Sunbreakers take it easily.
And if you're a Sunbreakers fan, you like seeing that 2-0. And if you're a Sunbreakers player, you feel confident coming out of that one. A very, very good two-set game from them. Very convincing as well. But Kingslayers, again, I gave them credit in game one. I'll do it again. They had a very strong early game. They showed up when they needed to in that last game, but it all happened too fast. Phoenix to 20 minutes is difficult to come back from from anyone, and Sunbreakers do a great job putting that game away. I, out of both of the games, I was not expecting the second game to be as quick as it was. The first game went to 36 minutes. That game was about a 28 minute game, maybe a little bit less than that, actually. It's, I, I was, that first game felt a lot more dominant by Sunbreakers in the early portion of the game. The score was four to one in their favor. This game was four to four. Uh, at about 10 minutes it was really close but instead this game felt like the one that just kind of went so much faster here we go Casey Schreiker is obviously the biggest name on this board we've said that name so many times we can go ahead and point out that Strife even though picking the Pele did not do as much as I expected them to Burger Pluto though Three and three in that Yana is something that, that you might want to look at if you're a Kingslayers fan as well as a Kingslayers unstoppable player in the future. Looks really good on it, to be honest with you. Maybe use a couple more space and time, maybe get a couple more kills with it, and that could be a really good and sturdy pick for them. Absolutely could, and uh, we saw last year, I think, uh, I mean, especially as playoffs rolled on, a lot of different pocket picks that you would have to ban out or they would just destroy you. Can certainly be a case for that here in Unstoppable. Did look good on that Giannis. We already talked about Casey Striker a ton this set, and once again, Cap and Chris taking home the top damage there from Sunbreakers. More sneaky damage coming from the ADC, but a great set by all the Sunbreakers, honestly, just looked cool, calm, and collected throughout. I think they're in a great spot heading into the rest of the season. Yeah, Casey Striker going 25-0 and 0 is a great position to be in in a set. And 2-0-ing Kingslayers is a great start to that. If you get 2-0, you get three points going your way into the standings. And that puts Sunbreakers into, I believe, a top five position currently in Unstoppable. Top four position in Unstoppable. So we will keep those updated for you guys. As I am an LC, I'll have to do that as well. And my fellow LCs will do it for you. But... Man, I want to keep watching these Sunbreakers and especially KC Striker and that team, Red Pepper as well, coming out, doing some really great games. I'm excited to watch the next couple of games from both of these teams, but especially Sunbreakers. Absolutely going to be excited to follow the paths of all the teams that are in the Unstoppable Division as the season goes along. That's going to about wrap it up here for us today. It's been week three of the Unstoppable Division. Sunbreakers get the win 2-0 over the Kingslayers. I've been Kingfisher along with Phoenix on the cast and of course Nublet running the camera and production as well. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time on the Smite Athlete.